Hello everybody, my name is Leo and welcome to a very quick late night tutorial from Blau Films. I just released a new little free product, it's this realistic moon phases assets. I've created this moon in Cinema 4D and Corona Renderer and I added the sun and I made it spin around to replicate all the different phases that the moon goes through. So we have the full moon, we have the little crescent moon, we have all of them in EXR files in this single pack. There are a lot of cases where you're working with a shot that looks pretty cool by itself, but you could give it that little bit of extra epicness by adding a full moon or by adding a crescent moon in there. So decompositing is actually very simple. I've got this shot over here from Teresa Almeida's latest short film, The Little Scribe. There is some matte painting work that went into this as well, which I will probably cover in the next tutorial. But Let's see how we actually add the moon. So the process will obviously start with motion tracking the scene. There isn't any movement going on in this scene, as in camera tracking or panning. But we do get the little jitter from the camera not being 100% locked down to the ground and there's still a little bit of wind. So what I did is I selected the layer and I added a animation track and Boris mocha effect. In there, I opened Mocha, and I took the pen tool, and I created this very little shape over here that is selecting the peak of this church. Now, this is one of the most contrast-heavy sections of the scene. I could also have selected this massive tree over here, but due to the wind, it is moving a little bit, so I felt it would be safer to just take this static object over here. With that layer selected, before I hit track, down here at the bottom, you have these options in Mocha called large motion or small motion or manual track. Now, if you want to track jitter, you have to go for small motion. In any other situation, don't touch small motion. I hit track forwards and we got a pretty solid track. I hit save and went out. I went to layer, new, null object, which is this over here, null number seven. And I have created the tracking data for that layer export it to transform information, do that null, and there we go, we have all of the jitter onto this null. Adding the moons is simple. As you can see here, it will be made up of four layers. I went around looking for which moon I would like to add. I selected one of them, in this case, asset 34, which looks like this, and I've dragged it into my project window. I've then added it into my timeline, and I've scaled it down to be a relatively realistic size of about 11%. Now, the most important part right now is matching the shadows. So the shadows in this image are all moving downwards. So the sun is going to be above us and a little bit further away into the distance. I've rotated the asset to have the shadow section of the moon facing downwards. Now that the lighting is matching, the next thing you want to do is match the blur of the scene. If I zoom in a lot into the scene, you'll see that the image is not really sharp over here, so I've added a camera lens blur of 10. I've then followed up by adding a curves adjustment. This will be dependent on whatever you're doing, but I've lowered the highlights over here in this curves. I want to take away some of the detail to then reintroduce some of the detail in a more controlled way with a second duplicate. I have lowered the highlights and I have increased the red and green channel a bit to get a little bit of a yellow tone into the mid-tones of the moon. The opacity, I've lowered that to the 80 to 90% range, 87 right now. I've duplicated that layer, and this is what that looks like. So we are reintroducing some detail. I have lowered the opacity to 45%, and I have deleted the curves adjustment so that we get the natural moon asset. The final thing you want to do is I've duplicated that layer one more time and I have turned the blending mode to normal and I've increased the opacity back to 100%. Now what we have is the original layer in the same position. We're going to be using this as an alpha mask. So I've created the layer new solid and in here with the color selection I typed in 50 over here at black value. So what that gives us is a 50% gray solid which means that if we put it to soft light, it will completely disappear. So onto that layer, I have added a effect, noise and grain, add grain, and I've turned the viewing mode to final output. 
I have selected the track mat, alpha mat, with the normal mode moon on top of that layer. What we're doing now is basically just matching the grain that we have in the footage over here with our moon plate that we've added over here. I've selected all the moon layers except for the gray solid and I've parented them to the null object. The result as you can see is pretty fine and it's very quick to achieve. Now let's have a look at a second example. This is a nighttime shot or at least we're doing a day for night over here to make it look like a nighttime shot. Compositing the moon into this is a very similar process. First of all, again, I've motion tracked the cross on top of the church, and both the stars and the moon are parented to that track. I've added the moon in and I've scaled it down to the realistic scale. I've matched the blur with a camera lens blur, and instead of a curves adjustment, I went for a tint adjustment. I lowered the amount of the tint to about 40%, but I've changed the highlights to be slightly more blue. I've lowered the opacity to be about 90%, I've duplicated that layer, I've removed the tint so that we get some more of that original color back and I've added a Gaussian blur. Now I'm working in a 1920 by 1080 composition so I gave it a Gaussian blur of 235. I lowered the opacity to 10%. Now what we're doing is basically trying to replicate the atmospheric haze that we would get by looking at the moon at night. So I've duplicated the moon layer, kept the opacity to 10%, kept the blending mode to screen, and I've increased the Gaussian blur to 500. Duplicated it one more time, kept all the settings the same, except for a Gaussian blur of 800, and I did it one more time, increasing the Gaussian blur to 1000. To finish everything off, I went into Layer, New Solid, and I made it a black solid. In there, as you can see what I did is I went to Effect, Video Copilot, Optical Flares, and I have created a flare that looks like this. I used the Pro preset and I went for the Master Prime 100mm. I lowered the brightness to be about 60 and in Flickr I upped the speed to 25%, kept the type to smooth and I put the amount to 20. What that looks like is something like this. I turned that layer to add and lowered the opacity to also be 10%. And together there you go. That's how you composite the moon into either a day shot or a nighttime shot. I hope you enjoyed this quick tutorial. If you want some more of these very quick tips for visual effects, be sure to let me know in the comment section below. Um, I'm very happy to make some more. So again, if you need to download the assets for the moon, come to my ArtStation store. Just download them for free. Be sure to rate this video, comment, subscribe. Thanks a lot for watching and we'll see you sometime next week. Cheers. Bye bye.